All right, so now embedding of high dimensional manifolds. So this um, is related to uh, PCA, but it works slightly different. And like it made like a big um, impact in the machine learning field, like maybe six years ago uh, when it first came out. And it's also a method to take high dimensional data and then turn it into a lower dimensional space. And uh, uh, to talk about this, uh, the data that we talk about is this uh, MNIST data set. And it's uh, quite famous. So it's basically a large set of handwritten digits. And uh, it's a very popular benchmarking tool for neural network performance. And so, um, like six years ago, the performance, I think, was at 96% accuracy. And now they're like way beyond 99%. I think it's 99.8% or something. Um, so it really is nearly perfect at this point. Um, so the it's like a like really large data set. I don't know exactly how many digits. But um, each data point is basically a small image. And it has 28 by 28 pixels. And uh, then each pixel is a value from 0 to 255, which is just like a grayscale, if you want. And there's a huge amount of possible data points. Right? So it's a very big, um, you know, there's, like, there's just like a lot of options. Even if these points were binary and not from 0 to 255, you know, there's a huge amount of of possible images that you could generate from this. And the, the true dimensions of this are 784, right? So if you would take this image that's 28 by 28, imagine you can flatten it down into just a one-dimensional array. That's how we get 784 dimensions. So uh, before we talked about like principal components analysis, so if I take this data set and then I run principal components analysis and I plot the first two principal components, um, then this is what I get. And I kind of colored the, uh, the digits um, a little bit. So you can kind of see that they do cluster by digit to a certain degree, but there's a lot of noise and randomness. So it's not really able to tease these things apart. And uh, the reason is quite simple. Um, so if you think of um, PCA, it kind of takes each pixel as its face value, right? So uh, in this example here, we have a four. And uh, think of, um, we have multiple fours, right? We have A, let's say, the four like that's labeled with an A, and then we have the four labeled with a B. And then if you look at their overlap, it's actually really low, right? So the red is kind of showing the overlap, and then the gray is like the union of the two uh, images. So this image took me way too long to generate, by the way. Um, but I think it explains really well why PCA doesn't quite work, or it's quite noisy, right? Because it basically just calculate like it kind of just like looks at this kind of like a Euclidean distance if you want and I can't really um I can't really tell that these are fours and it doesn't have any geometry information or that kind of thing right so it's like a really simplified way of looking at data so then the idea of these other methods is is like hold on right we have all these other data points um why if we compare a and B, do we just look at them directly? Like what if there is, for example, an intermediary four that has a really high match to A and a really high match to B, then we can kind of through like, you know, transient inference say that A and B are probably also similar. That's the, the basic idea behind that. And so this is kind of what Tisney introduced as a method. And um, it's also like really um, like easy to use. And uh, so this 
Disney came out maybe like six, seven years ago. And it really like, you know, was a big deal. Like people were like really amazed by it. And uh, so here we have a short code example where we load the MNIST data. And uh, we have this later also in the uh, Google Collab notebook. And so here, what we just uh, do in this code example is plot uh, one of the data points uh, in this data set. So here we have a zero, right? Uh, so really simple. And uh, so now if we want to calculate the Tisney visualization of this, then uh, this is what we get compared to the principal components analysis. So you can see it's actually way nicer, right? It really separates the digits and there's still some uh, miss clustered ones or like misplaced ones, but overall it's much nicer than the principal components analysis. Um, so this is just a code how to uh, do this, but so you can kind of see it's super similar to the principal components analysis. We have this Tisney object. We again tell it the number of components. So one thing to notice is this package doesn't really allow you to do more than three dimensions. Um, otherwise, I think you have to change the method and then it gets really slow. So um, something to keep in mind. Uh, the perplexity I'll talk about in a little bit, but this is like a parameter where you can kind of tweak the behavior of the algorithm. And so, yeah, this is how we kind of we calculate it and plot it. So you can see it's also TSNA fit transform. So it's identical to PCA in usage, basically. So how do they actually work, right? So like uh, as the title of the section was, it's embedding of a high dimensional manifold. And uh, it sounds really fancy, but it's um, actually quite simple idea. So a manifold you can think of as a low dimensional object that's folded in a high dimensional space. So um, a good analogy is a piece of paper, right? Piece of paper is totally two dimensional, right? It, I mean, it has, I guess, some height to it, but not really, right? So we have a we have a two dimensional object. But then you can fold it, right? Like, like if you do origami, you can make a swan out of it and then it's three-dimensional. But basically you just folded a two-dimensional object and made it three-dimensional. And uh, so this is the analogy if we have data where, you know, maybe, um, so in this example, we have this like Swiss roll thing, uh, depending how you, you see it, you could just say, well, hold on a minute. This is just like a two-dimensional sheet of data points, even though it's like in this, you know, snail form. Um, maybe thinking of it as just like a sheet like this is uh, way better for me, right? And uh, so this, this folding, you can kind of think of as a bijection or, you know, like it's like a reversible function. So you have this function that takes the you know two dimensional folds it into three dimensional and vice versa right? so that would be ideal where you have this like lossless uh, transformation between the two representations so um, how TSNE does it is um, I don't think I have a good picture for this so let me explain it here um, so each of these uh, pluses is a data point. And so what you do is you say um, you want to keep the local structure of the data intact, meaning um, you give the algorithm the dimensions that you want to project something in. So in this case, two dimensions. And then you tell it how many neighbors it should keep um, at similar distance to itself. And so Tisney, what it does is it basically says um, it will first randomly put the data points on a two-dimensional space. And then it will calculate the distance in the low dimensional space of that, like of the positions of all the data points. And then it will have the distances in the high dimensional space. And it tries to keep the distances of the low dimensional space similar to the distances in the high dimensional space. Um, I hope that makes sense. But so in the end, what this means is because you only have, uh, you work with like these nearest neighbors, 
it tries to maintain the local structure preserved and uh and then you have this like transient behavior where like one node you know has like 20 neighbors and then one of his 20 neighbors has another set of neighbors but they overlap so they build this neighborhood graph and so it's kind of like a, then like an iterative force directed uh network that just tries to pull and push and minimize uh this uh, uh objective function or like this um energy function that it's trying to minimize and so this is what this looks like if you uh, if you run it um so it has these iterations and then in each iteration you know it pulls at the data points and they eventually anneal to like some form of layout that it likes and uh, then eventually it stops once it doesn't you know change uh the positions anymore and then that's your layout and so the the thing to understand with these methods is, is that the positions of these points is kind of arbitrary. There isn't like a correct way of, of layout, right? So this could have looked completely different each time we initialize it because it starts from this like random point. And uh, all it does is then trying to, you know, pull and push until it's kind of happy, right? And um, Another issue with these is, is that the space in between, like this, you know, th these empty spaces, they don't really have much meaning, right? So they're not like uh, interpretable as with PCA. So in PCA, um, you know, the space is clearly defined, um, uh, you know, geometrically, like you can explain it with the original dimensions of your data. Here, that goes out of the window right like here it's just you have to take it as face value right? okay so um so if we run tisney on uh, the mnist data it works really well so i couldn't get it as nice as this but this is like a example where you can really see that the digits nicely cluster in their own uh, different uh, groups and it's kind of a cool plot because here they just like superimpose the actual handwritten digits. So you can kind of see that there is this trend where you have these fives, for example, that are tilted, you know, to the to the right on the top. And then they kind of like turn around, right? It's kind of cool. Like, so you kind of understand how the, or like with the ones, it's like very good to see, right? So the ones are the ones that like on the top, they kind of point to the right. And then they then you get the ones that are more pointing to the left. But so they kind of connect together because they have these local connections. Okay. And then uh, there is another method that is more recent, and it's probably not that new at this point anymore either. And that's uh, UMAP, uh, which is Uniform Manifold Approximation and Projection. And uh, even though like teasing is like really well established and like a lot of people use it, uh, UMAP is arguably better. So it's um, a package that's really well maintained and they have a lot of features. And uh, there's a couple of things where UMAP really excels over Tizni. Uh, and one is really that it's much faster and way more scalable. So with Disney, you can really run into long wait times. Uh, for example, in the Arches 4 case, if I want to calculate Tizni on half a million samples, if I start it, I can basically go home and come back next day because it's going to take forever. And like UMAP can do that like in a reasonable amount of time. So, and then another thing is, is that there's a difference in how Tizni and UMAP uh, manage and uh, preserve the local structure. And uh, so UMAP is uh, different in that it also is able to somewhat preserve global structure. And I have a slide all the way in the end uh, to show that. And then, um, yeah, allegedly also the stability with UMAP is apparently more stable, um, which probably has to do with the underlying uh, cost function, which for UMAP is cross entropy versus KL diversions in TSNE. So uh, you, are supposedly get you, you get more similar plots even if you have random starting points 
Um, and that's probably because you have this constraint on the global structure of the data. Okay, so uh, so here is um, a synthetic data set that I created, which is this coil. Um, so it's a three-dimensional data set. But I mean, strictly speaking, you could argue this is a one-dimensional object, right? Like if you would say, I'm only interested really in this gradient. So, okay, so now the one thing to note is here we have uh, three dimensions and then X and Y, they have slightly higher variance than uh, this uh, Z dimension. So this example, PCA isn't the best option, right? So um, I don't know, for example, if we run, um, yeah, if we run PCA, what do you expect the first principal components would capture? Any ideas? We'll have some uh, uh, code for this in a second. Uh, okay, what do you think? Um, PCA look like? It's a bit Thank tough. You. Huh? Mm -hmm. So if it's just it's the first two? If it's just the X and Y, then probably just the... It will probably kind of reduce it on the V stacks and obtain most of the information. Exactly. So uh, the... Yeah, so it's, it's because, I mean, basically, all the three dimensions are more or less independent from each other. So then it will really just take the, you know, X and Y dimensions. And then you kind of get this like top down view on that coil. And that doesn't really help you from, like you wouldn't really be able to see the structure of the data that well. Right? 